name off the cloud and before the cloud was even completely stopped, I could tell that I was coming into sort of like a wharf area, like with ships and seems like it's in somewhat of a tropical area. And there's people dressed in like white. Seems like they are like purposeful, like they have a a work like work to do. It's like somewhat of a busy sort of port area, but in a beautiful tropical climate. Oh, I see. And what do you sense about this climate? I sense that it's like warm, sort of muggy and humid. And yeah, just the things you would expect to see, like the sand and the ocean water, lots of vegetation. Does the vegetation seem very tall to you or short, do you notice? There's both. There's definitely tall, tall trees and and then the shorter vegetation on the ground. And if you smell this place where you are, if you use your sense of smell, do you smell anything or do you have a sense of what it smells like there? There's a mix of like salty water and then just sort of like a bit of like a human smell, like sort of a muggy human smell mixed with like this sharp salty water. Mm -hmm. If you focus in on yourself there, do you sense whether or not you have feet there? Definitely, it's like, um, yeah, I can already sense it feels like a male energy inside of like leather boots that you would see on, I want to say like it's not a pirate, but like some a sailor from back in the day with like leather brown boots that are tall and then pants and like a white shirt. Oh, what if, do you get a sense about your face at all? Yeah, sort of like a younger face with male and definitely clean shaven. I think I have blue eyes and a nice smile. I seem like a happy, kind person. And I have a hat on my head that I like to tip at people. You said you have a hat. Tell me more about that. It's like a leather hat that comes together at the front and flips up on the side. And yeah, it has a bit of a peak at the top. And I seem to like definitely like to nod at the ladies coming by and, and tip my hat at them. Oh, I see. And what do you sense about the ladies? What are they like there? Or what do you feel about their presence? I feel like they, um, they're they working in the community. Like They do a lot of stuff to help with the sailors, like um, packing crates and helping with like food preparation for voyages and yeah, they're really pretty. They wear like full white cotton sort of tunic with like a rope around their waist and more like sandals on their feet. Uh huh. See? And if you focus in on yourself, you said you felt young. Is there anything else about and happy? Is there anything else you notice about yourself? Do you feel healthy or not? I feel healthy. Um, feel like I am single, and yeah, probably in my twenties. Okay, 
And do you get the feeling or sense that you live nearby? Let's go to wherever it is that you live there and be there now. Well, I have a sort of like a cottage, very small, made out of like branches. And I don't live there full time. It's just where I stop when we come back there. But I seem to primarily live on a ship. Um, but there is, uh, yeah, accommodations on this island for when we port there. So definitely very basic. Yeah, a branch sort of made cabin with like a bed and there's a bowl in there with one of those like phases in there. Not mm -hmm. a phase, um, more almost like a milk jug type thing. I don't remember what they're called, but where you can wash your face and hands. Mm -hmm. It does look like there's black people uh, on this island too that help more with the cleaning of these little sort of huts, I guess, that fill yeah. our water and, and whatnot. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and tell me more <clears throat> about what it looks like inside there. Um, inside is it's small and the ground is just sand. So you have everything that you need to be out of the elements in the sense that you have a little almost like cot that's up off the ground. And then, I, I, like I said, a basin for washing and a chamber cot sort of type thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's a small area sort of on the one side where you could do some very basic cooking. It's just really meant for almost like one person. Do you get a sense how you spend your time there when you're there? What kind of things do you do? <clears throat> yeah, when we're there, it's a little bit of time off, like you're preparing for your next voyage. So the happy time, like you're reconnecting with the community, so spending time around fires, telling stories. There's definitely dancing that happens. And I find like it seems like maybe more of the original habitat to that island. Like the like the black people there are very happy and they have like a lot of stories and I love spending time with their kids. I think their kids are just so fun. They're running around everywhere. Oh wow. And so is the is the community um could you tell me more about the community? Seems like a very simple community, but a really happy community. They live off the land, um, they fish in the ocean and they're like a healthy, happy people. They definitely integrate well with the surroundings and, and Mother Earth and nature, and they have a connectedness with that for sure. That's wonderful. I see. And then you said that you go on the ship. Could you tell me about that? What What is that like? It's like two things. Like there's a bit of sort of sadness if you get on the ship because you're so like that's your home like you're not able to really get off it for months at a time but there's also a sense of like excitement and adventure mm -hmm. and you know that you'll be back to where this place is and it's not forever and there's almost like a sort of sense of like duty and accomplishing almost like a mission when you leave. Hmm. Oh, interesting. And what is your ship like? Do you get a sense of what it feels like it looks like? Yeah, it's very big, um, very 
made of wood and it's got like a busyness to it too. Again, the people have a purpose on this ship and the purpose is like you're sort of all thinking of the same thing because you're all on the same mission. So everyone mm -hmm. got their job and um yeah, it's a little bit obviously different than the island. You're more mm, I don't know how to say, like you're at the whim of Mother Nature when you're out there in the middle of the ocean. So the weather's not always good and you're getting whipped by rain and um sometimes like waves. So it can be scary. Mm -hmm. Mostly I feel like I'm very excited even if things do get like that. It I think I sort of thrive on this sort of sense of like adventure and I sort of take everything with a bit of excitement. Oh wow. What is it like at night? What do you do? Night times on the ship are wonderful. They seem calmer for some reason. There are more more um you know there are times when the ocean can still be volatile but when it's not and the seas are calm and people have sort of done their jobs for the day there's liveliness like people are down below deck playing cards or above deck playing these kind of games with bottles um but i seem to like to sort of crawl up to a higher point on the ship and just look out at the stars and the sea and I just really enjoy listening to the sounds of people having fun but not always being engaged with it but mm -hmm. just hearing the energy and feeling the energy but having time alone looking out at the ocean I love that oh that's so wonderful what do the stars look like or what do you notice they're so bright it's so clear Wow. It seems to be like a connection to the stars above, for sure. Like it's like oh, yeah, there's a connection to that, just to the stars and what I'm seeing in the sky. I just feel like a good energy from that. Oh, tell me more about that. It feels like a good energy. Yeah, it feels like I know that there's more out there and that I have an understanding that the world is like more than maybe what a lot of people on the planet understand and that there's like guidance from up above and like a purpose to this life where some people on earth at this time don't understand that but the people on the island where we go back and forth to they do mm -hmm. and a lot of people on my ship not all of them but a lot of people understand that too but I definitely seem to get a sense that there's more up in that sky that's guiding us for sure oh wow and and do you ever um um what do you think about it do you get a sense as to what you you believe about it think that I just get a sense that I know like that this life is a part of something bigger and I don't get mired down in a lot of like the daily things that other humans do like I seem to be able to understand that there's a greater purpose for our life and I just feel a real connectedness to the sky and, and the universe, I would say, as a whole. Do you get a sense why you feel you don't get mired down like other people that you notice do? Do you get a sense why? It seems to be that my spirit just isn't as heavy and I don't engage with a lot of the things that they do. I don't eat a lot of heavy foods or 
I don't really drink a lot of alcohol. A lot of people on the ship, you know, I would say more of the people that help with the cleaning and stuff on the ship, they definitely drink a lot more. But I feel like it just like dulled my senses and connection to the universe. I don't do that. And I think that it helped me sort of have my senses about me more and maintain that connection with something bigger. Oh, wow. Interesting. Anything else you notice about that? Yeah, I feel like if I really focus on the sky, that there's certain like brighter stars that almost are like giving me a message without me knowing exactly what that is. Like I can see them flashing in the distance and it just makes me happy and I don't know exactly what it means but I know that it's something good and that there's like a connection oh wow amazing and is there anything else that seems important or interesting about the ship and about your experience with the stars and about feeling good the sense of purpose on the ship. There's like a like a mission of some sort. Like we're taking knowledge and I wanna say like sort of sacred artifacts on the ship. And like we're what? I wanna say things that have like a significance to the cultural significance to the whole earth though sort of like sacred objects um i'm seeing like papers like scrolls and like chalices and treasure, like um, definitely treasure, like gold coins, but it's more than that. Like we have the coins and stuff that are of importance for financial reasons, but we're really guarded with the safekeeping of some important historical items. And do you get a sense as to, or feeling as to what you're doing with these and what your missions are? I'm getting the sense that we are taking these and we're hiding them for a reason so they don't get put into the wrong hands and that they need to, for some reason, be taken far away and put into safekeeping I think that there's people that want these items, but they don't have good intentions with them. And we don't want them to be lost. So we're taking them far away and hiding them somewhere else. And where do you hide them? Have you done this before? Definitely have done this before. Seems like we're going to an island It's really different than this tropical place. It's flatter. There's not so much sand as there is rock, small rocks. And it seems like we're building almost like an elaborate tunnel system there to hide these treasures. Oh, tell me more about that. It looks like there's only some of us that leave on the ship, but that a lot of people stay behind and they work on these tunnels and they're building these.
so that we can get this treasure hidden underground. How do you build the tunnels? Do you get a sense or feeling as to what you guys use? There's a lot of excavation. There's shovels and being like an interesting way of removing rock from inside the tunnel using pieces of wood sort of lined up in a way that the rocks, like even bigger rocks, can be sort of tumbled out, I guess, on these logs. It's oh, like okay. System, so you can put larger rocks on these logs that are tied together with rope. And if you pull the rope, the rocks just move as the wood turns and they're pulled out of the tunnels that way. So it's sort of like an economy and effort thing so that the people digging these tunnels don't have to like take buckets of rocks and go out. They use the holy type system but it's flat to pull the all the rocks out from these tunnels and so you create these tunnels so you can store everything in them exactly and it's interesting because once you have these tunnels you leave the wood in there and they almost come become like layers of the ground in the tunnels. So you don't remove the wood. You leave the wood that you've used for excavating in there. And it allows you to go from different levels in these tunnels. So they're, they're staged. There's different levels in there and it looks like it's almost like a whole system under here. I can see ladders going down to another set of these logs and then down another set of logs. So the tunnels are really deep and have, yeah, just a lot of different levels and spots to put the treasures in. Wow. And where do you put the treasure? Seems like we make these really big chests underneath the earth. Almost box, like they're boxed in with wood, but they're stronger than that. Almost like some form of concrete in a way. Uh huh. How big do they look? They're really large. They're, and I think of a buggy with like a cart and wagon from back in the day. Like, they're like four times the size of like the width of that. They're very big. You can hold a lot of treasure in there. And we put, Hmm. Seems like the deepest one is where the really valuable treasure goes. Mm -hmm. Leave some not so important treasures in the upper levels of these caves. Mm -hmm. Just if anyone's coming and they find them, but they might think that they found the treasure, but it's not. The real treasure is buried very deep inside these caves. What kind of so it was all like artifacts that are important. If you look at the treasure, wh what do you notice about it? There's like leather bound books with really important writings inside. What kind of writings do you get a sense? It's interesting because I don't know that I've opened the books and looked at them, but I know that it contains Hmm. Like historic things on sort of the true nature of 
earth and some of it maybe beginnings and powerful like knowledge that for some reason is supposed to be hidden i feel like there's like a link here to like the knight templar group mm -hmm. that's like helping or was part of like securing some of this Mm -hmm. I definitely know I'm not a Knight Templar, but I know that there's like a link to some of the treasure we have and like the work that they did. It's like mm -hmm. they just brought some of the treasure to us and then we're safeguarding it and taking it to this place. You get a sense of you ever come in contact with them? I do. I know I can see them. On that other island where we first started, it's, I can see that they come there. And I don't know if I'm just like making this up, but I see them on their horses and I get a whole sense of that. And they pass this treasure off to us and we take it over. But at some point, they're going to come to this island too. Um, but they haven't made that voyage yet because they're in the process of just like getting all this stuff. That's their work right now. And then we're starting as they get it to take it over. But eventually they will make a trip with us and they'll come over too. And what do they look like to you? Do you, do you ever see them? Do you ever get a sense as to what they look like? You get like a sense of their energy and their presence. Like they're very like masculine but with this like purposeful energy, I don't want to say it's kind hearted, but it is a good energy. Like they're uh -huh. there to do good things and they're not like people might not say that they're kind in every facet of their work, but they're doing their work with a very like high purpose and understanding of like a, need to safeguard information nice. and so they um they work with you and you are basically in charge of, of bringing this stuff to this to this island where they um they give you the treasure basically exactly there's a great deal of trust there and there's a great deal of trust with the people on the island too because they see this stuff coming in and they help load it up. So everyone there understands that this is happening and that, that there's a like a need for it and that everyone seems to have a sort of sense of the information. Like we already sort of know a small parcel of it and the idea of like working with Earth and connecting with universal energies. But there's more. There's so much more. Like we know that within those leather bound books and even some of the like chalices, that there's like an energy and almost like a timelessness and uh, great importance to some of these. Do they ever go ahead? Yeah, we're just all there to protect them. And does anybody ever mention who wrote them or where they this information and this treasure originated from like a long long time before i see like i'm thinking like it was before well before our lifetime like i'm talking about like king solomon area that comes to mind Atlantis, Lemuria, Egyptian, like there's a conglomeration of just a vast amount of treasures from different areas that have somehow been kept safe. And more than that is like the knowledge that might have come from these areas that people were able to transcribe in these really big leather bound books. Mm -hmm. And that is seems to be one of the most important things is these books and these scrolls. I see. Interesting. And so you um, you put them all 
in different places in the different levels of these of these tunnels and is there anything else that you notice about this that seems important or interesting Seems like we know that they are supposed to be found in the future at some point. And so part of the reason setting these tunnels up the way we have is that it delays the finding of these artifacts, but it allows people to know that something's there. So people find a little bit at a time and it keeps people interested in, I guess, the hunt for it. But it also serves to slowly build up, I guess, the consciousness of people to a level where when the main treasure is found, that they'll be more ready for it. So they tunnels make it hard to get to that main treasure on purpose because we know that there's a right time for this knowledge to come forward so the tunnels are built in the sense that small pieces of it can be found first sort of to build that excitement and circulate that type of energy among people so they're more open to the idea that this type of stuff exists and then we give more and more pieces of the treasure over time. And like I said, then when the real treasure is found, there's a greater amount of people in the world that are ready and open to receive that information. And do you get a sense as to why you guys um, needed to hide it? Who was going to take it? It seems like someone was going to take it who wanted to suppress the knowledge. It wasn't necessarily that they wanted to use it for their own means. They already had an understanding of some of the knowledge itself. They would have used like the gold and stuff like that just because they're greedy. They wouldn't have used it for the right things, but they have an understanding somewhat of the fact that the knowledge almost will raise the consciousness of the earth and they don't want that out there so they would who? destroy it they were going to destroy it they were going oh. to destroy it and you get a sense who decided that they didn't want this consciousness or what group this was do you ever come in contact with them or know of them Seems like I don't come in contact with them, but that I know that when we're on our ship, that we have to be always so vigilant of that type of energy, sort of seeking that stuff. But I don't personally come in contact with them, but I know that the Knights Templar has more contact with them and more information about that. I don't know that they share a ton of that information with us it seems like we're all just on such a mission like they go and they do their thing and they they pull all of this treasure and information from the very spot that's been hidden before and it's like there's an urgency to get it to us because this sort of other and somewhat nefarious type group is wanting to get their hands on it and squash it so it's sort of like a really exciting time because there's just so much pressure um and effort to get this done quickly so we don't lose this i think some of it definitely does get lost or some is still not recovered from other places that it was hidden so there's mm -hmm. still pressure out there that wasn't able to be brought forward without it being found by this other group of people that wa would take it into the wrong hands. So it wasn't all brought to the ship, but the Knights Templar has done what they can to get as much as they possibly can over to us to take over for safekeeping. And do you get a sense how you started to work with the Knights Templar? Like what, how did they, how did this originate for you? 
think if there was an understanding, almost an unwritten like energy exchange, like we are on a level where we can feel like a person's intention. Um, and so we knew, they knew that I and this crew that I work with on this ship, we have a really honorable captain and a group of really smart sort of like engineer type people. And they, I think, were aware of us before we were aware of them and had been watching what we were doing and how well we could function at sea. And it was them that approached us. And it was, like I said, an understanding through energy, almost exchange that we could feel. And do you get a sense? And do you get a sense where the Knights Templar was living or how they were able to watch you, where they where they were in relation to you guys? I think it started somewhere in England and we would have had our ships over in that area. And I don't know what exactly we were doing with transportation of some sort, but it was seemed to be more like dry goods, like tea, et cetera. It wasn't treasure. But they were just watching how we functioned and I think how we bartered with people and how we set our prices and that we were doing things as fair as possible, that we don't take advantage of people, that we would try to help people where we could. And I think it was over in, in an England area that they started to see us and get a sense of working with us. I see. So it was somewhere in England, that area where they noticed you guys. It was. And I think now I realized that the island that we were on, we didn't know about that island at all. It was the Templars that knew about the island and they took us there because they knew that it was a safe space and they had been there before working with those people and they knew they could trust those people too. So it's an intermediary type spot so they can get their treasure to us there without being viewed by these sort of like bad people that wouldn't be more aware of what they were doing if we were to load ships in england area uh -huh. so we bring things to this island and we have time to properly load them onto our ship and prepare for the voyage to the next island that's whatever far away is it far away where you guys go so they the the templars go to your island to give you all the treasure which is a, a tropical island far away it doesn't seem like it takes that long from england to get to this island not as long as it takes to get from the tropical island to the next destination where we're really hiding this treasure. Oh. It's long enough. It can't it can't be that long because I don't think they want to have to worry about having this treasure on their ship for very long. They're not as good as sailor people as we are. They're better at being on land on their horses and fighting and then they utilize other people that are good in other areas to do those things so they do have good you know ship people to load their ships on in England and they have a group of people that they can trust there to help them do it safely and it looks like they have underground tunnels in England too so they're bringing their treasure down through tunnels there onto these ships in England. They bring the ship over to this island and then we sort of regroup there and then transport it on this longer voyage over to this other island. Oh, wow. And do you, um, when you, do you get a sense as to where they have or how they got this treasure? How did they even get it? Do you get a sense? seems like they're working with people even 
like in the royal family. Um, like there's a lineage here to queens and kings. And a preservation of this treasure has been going on for many years. And it's been hidden in various parts of, it looks like Scotland and England, but something happened. And I don't know exactly what it is, but something happened that propelled these two groups to decide that they had to pull as much of it as they could from these areas and remove it and take it over to this island far away. Oh, wow. So there's a lineage. So they work with the um, royal family, it looks like? It does. It looks like there's something to do with kings and queens and hundreds of years of accumulation and safeguarding of that treasure. And it's like the Templars protected those royal families too. So there's a really good amount of trust between them and I think that it was more of a protective trust over the people initially versus the treasure but now there's an understanding that the treasure and I keep saying treasure but it's not all gold it's like a knowledge based type thing and an energy and spiritual based type thing they have to collect all these for safekeeping and they know that it has to be somewhere farther away, sort of somewhere where no one would ever think to look for them. As mm -hmm. far as these people that are like in the England European area, they would never think to look to this island where these treasures are taken. Wow. And do you get a sense like which kings and queens? Do you have any sense like that? Who? There's a heavy influence of Scottishness here. Mm -hmm. Not as much England royalty as there is a Scottish connection. Interesting. Interesting. Is there anything else you notice about this that looks interesting or important? I think it's all just so interesting, like how everyone is so understanding of like the need to work together. And even when we land on this other island, the people there that have been doing such hard work to build these tunnels, there's like just a sense of purpose and camaraderie there too. Mm -hmm. and it's like very mission focused. Like there's like, we're jovial and we're happy to see each other and everyone gets along, but it's not like a party type atmosphere. It's like a very purpose built type atmosphere where we're there to like do this work and everyone's working so hard, but like excited to do it. Oh, wonderful. Is there anything else about that that you notice? I think I'm just sort of in awe every time I come back to the island to see what the engineer type people have built because it's a really intricate system of tunnels and it's going to be a really intricate way of hiding this all. Like we have to cover up all the excavation when we're done so that it looks natural and so that it's not really found for many, many years. So the sort of the thought and the scope of it that is put into it and just the work, it sort of has me in awe. The tunnels are high enough that I can easily walk through them and then crawl down ladders to the next section, to the next section, to the next section. And it goes really deep into the earth. And, and it's interesting because it's very close to the water, to the ocean, but they found a way to keep the water from coming into the tunnels systems that they've built. So it's very 
like the engineering of this is pretty amazing. What does it look like in there, in these tunnel systems? There's like a lot of clay around the heading of, like it's like um almost like a capsule form, like a like something you take in a pill form, but on a grand scale. That's the shape of the tunnel, little spots when you get in. It's like a big pill form, mm-hmm. surrounded by clay and supported by wood. And then, like I say, then you can step onto the almost like plank flooring, but it's made of these wood logs. And then these wooden ladders can take you down to the next step. And it seems like they're able to lower treasure easily into this really big vault at the bottom that's so deep in the earth with like almost like a pulley system so they can lower the treasure into there. You can walk down, but they don't place every treasure in by taking it in armfuls. They're able to almost like a dumb waiter type thing. They can put the treasure on and lower it down through these levels into this giant vault. And the vault will be closed and almost a cement type lid will be put on. And it'll almost be like waterproof. So even if water does infiltrate the system, it's not going to be able to come into this main vault. Interesting. And do you guys leave any clues? Because you said you know that at one point it'll be found, but do you leave any clues that it's found or that you're aware of? We leave lots of clues and people think that it's a mistake, I think, when they start finding them. Like they'll find buttons from our uniforms or like little bullets, round, almost like what you'd see like in a muskrat type gun or something that we use for hunting when we're on the island. Like they'll find these little treasures and they'll think that we were careless, but we were purposefully leaving almost breadcrumb behind. So they would slowly start realizing that there was something more that happened on this island. And they're starting to, they're starting to find our pottery and they're starting to find a lot of what we they're starting to find the tunnel and they know that there was an intricate system that's becoming really clear but they haven't got to the main treasure yet and they won't for a few more years not till not till the consciousness of the earth is more ready but that is going to happen what clue what other clues did you leave aside from buttons and pottery and stuff like that Coin, so we wouldn't put all of the money coins in the tunnel systems. We would sort of sprinkle coins around the island so that they would find that and know that there was treasure. And they're finding our tools, some of the tools that we use to make the tunnel, they're finding that. They're finding pieces of our ship. It looks like there was a ship there that wasn't in good condition anymore. And so we didn't take that ship back to the island. We left it behind and we used that ship sort of like good stewards of the earth would. We took it apart, we disassembled it And we were able to use the wood to build some of the platforms in the tunnels. And they're finding some of this really old wood and some of the metal fastenings on the ship. They're finding some like the buckles that we would use to house the treasure on the ship. So these big chests, they're finding some of the hardware from that. What about for the main treasure? Do you have any 
signs for where the main treasure is? Like what would, what in the future when people find it, it what would they see? It's deep in the earth, but they're finding a way to get through the tunnel system. It's still a ways away, but they're working on it. And it's, it is, it's down there. And it's, it's just sort of going to crack open what a few people already in the world know and sense. But it's going to be like a hard copy of information that some people have somehow energetically received or have like a knowing of or their conscious subconscious mind has you know had this information or like through the work that you do with past lives people have had sense of this information but when this treasure is found it's like a hard copy evidence of this so people that aren't sold on some of these concepts will have no choice but to open their minds to it because they'll see it in a very physical form. Wow, what does it look like it's made out of this main hard copy? Like a very sort of thick linen cotton type paper with old-fashioned writing on with like an ink pen you could tell and it's bound in this very like thick leather it has like a gemstone set in each leather binding and it is tied so the the mass of books are tied with leather that you braid all the way down the side and the tops sort of to hold the books together. You braid this leather on the top, down the side, over to the bottom, and then there's still a lot of leather strapping left to wrap around the entire book and knot it. And yeah, that's what I see. And so and I don't... Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, what kind of... um gemstones do you see in the book i'm seeing a lot of red colored gemstones so ruby hmm can't think of the name of this gem but it's not a ruby there is ruby but it is like a pinky red there is mostly red gemstones in an oval shape on these books. I do see some green, almost like a malachite or really dark jade, but most of them seem to be red. And I believe that the gemstone has something to do, the properties of that gemstone have something to do with the knowledge that's in the book. But I don't know fully. This is just mm -hmm. my senses because I have... I've opened the books, but I haven't read what's in them. What does the language look like to you? Like, I mean, you said it's an interesting looking language. Like, do you notice anything about it? It looks like very old English. And then there's symbology in there as well. So there's symbols. There is writing. And what, what? you might think is another language, but I don't think it is. I think it's symbols that mean something to the subconscious of humans and that when we see these symbols it like awakens something in us and so it's not what, so much a language what symbols do you see or what how would you describe them i see on some of the pages that the symbols can take up an entire page almost like a crop circle it has a similarity to what you would see in crop circles and the symbology can take up an entire page and that's what it reminds me of and then in the book there'll be drawings of I see different things like pyramids I see almost like 
landscape stuff with an indication of how to better connect with the earth. And then there's symbology under there. And I don't know what that means at all. Mm -hmm. And then there's pages and pages of written text that looks to be very old English. Oh, it looks like old English. What makes you say that? The way that it's written and the words that are used, it's a very old dialect of English, but it will be very easily interpreted. It's not like, it's not a language that's going to be unknown to us. It's already been transcribed from other languages that we wouldn't have easily understood into these books. There was a reason for that. So that when these books are found, again, these people that are uncertain or unbelieving of this shift in the earth and the history of the earth will clearly be able to have a better understanding of it based on the fact that it this information is being presented in the language that a lot of the world understands. Oh, interesting. Wow. Interesting. Is there anything else that you notice about these books or about this language that you find interesting? I think I just find, again, it's a sense of awe because I know that it would have taken a great deal of work to transcribe this into English for this purpose and that there was so much knowledge transfer from various parts of the earth that was scribed into this these massive volumes and there's just they're so thick and they're so large and I just the scope again is just incredible it would have taken a lot of time and dedication and you can just sense that whoever and it was definitely a group of people that did it were just so committed to the accuracy of the transcription and took a lot of pride in the work. It's very evident. And do you get a sense what the original language was? Or what that language was like? It's like a language that I don't understand, almost like a space age type language that very few people would have an understanding of. But somehow there was enough that was passed down through this group of people that they could understand it. But there would be very, very few people that could. And I'm just getting a sense that there's almost no one on Earth left that could now. And they knew that that would happen. And so that they had to get this information put into a language that we would understand in our modern day. Wow. Wow. So how many books? Does it look like a lot of books or just a few books or the main treasure? I'm seeing 10 books. That number sticks in my mind that the number 10 it's somehow important that there's like the main 10 books. There's other information in the form of scrolls. There's like some loose leaf pages of other important information. But the specific transcribed information was put into 10 large volumes. Oh, I see. Wow. And after you did your job, you did your work, is there anything else that you noticed that um, aside from feeling the sense of purpose and everything like that, anything else that you notice that seems important? I think just like a personal importance, it's just a sense of like accomplishment. So we took several trips over there and it took several years. And I didn't have like a relationship with a partner or anything like that. My main focus was just on this work. And that was like not different for many of us. Some people had families 
but a lot of us were this way. And when the work was done, it looks like I almost chose to sort of retire back on that tropical island. What and was I, that like? Go ahead. Oh, it was wonderful. It was just such a happy existence. I seem to, not a lot of the white people stayed, but I did. And they always seemed to give me a hard time about the color of my skin because not a lot of us did. So there's still, you know, the black people are there and I just love being around them and their culture is just so beautiful. And I just love interacting with their kids. Their kids are just such a joy. And um, yeah, just, just a happy very peaceful life and I feel like it's sort of an easy ride after that work was done because I that was what my purpose in that lifetime was was to safeguard or help be part of safeguarding that information and once that was done I just was able to live my life out and know that I accomplished what I was supposed to and sort of have a peaceful rest of my existence. Did you get a sense how far that other island was from your tropical island how long how many days and nights did you guys have a, a um like a set time it usually took you i want to say that it took like a full cycle of the moon like at least 30 days on the on the ocean to get there i see and did you get a sense as to which, how you navigated? It was using the star system. So there was something that we knew about following the stars and even the brightness of the stars. They, it was almost like an airplane where the airplanes land, like um, a runway, but in the sky. And they would light up stars showing us where the brighter stars were with where we would point our ship. And that's how we knew how to get there was following this star system. And again, I know that there was like higher forces above. Now I can tell working above to sort of light up the sky that way for us. And we just knew, I guess, sort of in this energy connectedness type way to follow that system we had a, a trust in that system and I think there was sort of a transfer of that knowledge from the Knights Templar to us it looks like it looks like we didn't travel on our ships before we met them that way that they helped us understand that and yeah we were able to use that system that way Tell me about that. What was it like when you were taught by the Knights Templar? What was your teaching like? I think it opened up just a whole new world to us. I think that we we had a good energy about us before and we had a good moral compass and we were existing in the world as good people, but we weren't connecting as much to that higher energy that's out there before we met them. And I think it was easy for us to connect to because like I said, we already internally had a good heart and we were open-minded, but I think it was still pretty astounding, but also again, like exhilarating and exciting to learn this information and recognize that there was just this whole other amount of energy and knowledge in the world beyond sort of this basic human existence. What did you find the most interesting knowledge to come across? I think it would be to work with what they call the star people. And I think that's why I enjoy sitting on the ship looking up at the sky so much because I know that it's not just the sky with stars. I know that there's more up there, that there's some greater type of beings that are somehow working with us to guide us and that 
type of guiding the Templars on their missions too. And now that I understand this, I can feel their energy is just so, so much more and it makes me happy. It's like my heart is connecting. What did they tell you about the star people? Mostly that we can trust them and that they're there for like the advancement of the human race and that they are working with us to be protectors of this knowledge. And really that is all that we needed to know was just that it was safe for us to trust them and to open our hearts and minds to that experience. And that when we were seeing where they were pointing us, that we knew that we could follow that and that it would be safe to follow that and that they wouldn't steer us in a wrong direction. Did the Knights Templar ever tell you why the star people wanted to help? He said that they're invested in us for some reason as a whole. I don't think I have a really good understanding of that. From my mm -hmm. perspective, but the Knights Templar, they know more than I do, but they are invested in us and want to support us as a human race. And they have been for a really, 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 really long time. Did they tell you anything else about the star people that seemed important or interesting to you? I think I asked them at one time if they've ever seen them and they said that they've never seen them but from again the knowledge that they've accumulated that they had been seen in the past that there was a time when they felt more safe to come down to earth and in integrate with us and that a lot of the knowledge that we're safekeeping they played a part in teaching humans about that knowledge at one time but for some reason, it wasn't really safe for them to be here on Earth in the way that they were in the past. And for a long, long time now, they've been directing more of their intelligence to us through an energy transfer, a transfer of like telepathy where they stay more safely up in the stars, but they can come down, but they do so in like a disguised form. So they can come almost looking like a human form, but they don't need to, it sounds like very often because they're able to complete a lot of what they need to just through telepathy. How do they do that? What do you sense? There's people in the Templar group and the societies that are tied closely to them that are very open to these energies. They've evolved spiritually in a way that they can connect easily with these star people. And so not everyone in the Knights Templar is able to do this, but there is a certain amount of people that can. And they are able to relay this information to the rest of the group and help direct them as far as like when they should collect this treasure they know where it is through like passing of stories throughout generations so that wasn't as much of a concern they knew mostly where to find it but the star people helped them determine when to go and collect it so when it would be safest to do that so that they're not bound by these sort of nefarious groups that don't want them to do this work. So, so, did, so that the Knights Templar would communicate directly with them, but just wouldn't see them? Exactly. Did they tell you ever how they went about this communication? Sounds to me like there are some really, really wise, advanced people within their group. And they seem to go to 
a special place. It looks like in England, almost like surrounded by like rock. I want to say a cave, but it has an opening at the top. And it's shaped in a way that for some reason it helps with the energy and focus. So they focus in together using their energy and the power of their minds to connect in with this group of star people. And so the reason that there's a hole or opening in the top of this cave is that the energy sort of like resides, resounds out from them in a circular form and travels upward and then out through the top in a more concentrated form. And then there's an exchange somehow that can easily occur that way the star people direct their flow of thought down through the top of this cave. And it somehow, again, travels through the spherical shape of the cave into the minds of these individuals. Does it look like a cave or where does it look like this is? And if you look at a map. It looks like it is underground. It is underground with an opening and it's higher up on a mountain so that it wouldn't be easily found. But it's not that hard to get to. It's not really high up on the mountain. It's just high enough that people walking wouldn't see this opening and be able to tell that there's this cave there. And there's a side entrance to it so they can walk up this mountain and they know how to enter the cave through this tunnel. And then once they're in it, yes, it opens up into the sky. Interesting. Wow. I see. And it looks like somewhere in England they would go? It's definitely somewhere in England or Scotland. I'm feeling more England. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Wow. Thank you for all of this. And what about your island where you lived? If you look on a map, can you see where it looks like that island is where you lived? Mm -hmm. Something about Spain keeps coming to my mind. Something to do with a closeness to that area. Something tropical that would be in that part of the world. Where does it look like this island where you hid all the information is? If you look at a map of the globe. That looks more... I think there's a more of a connection to... the Atlantic provinces in Canada. I want to say out by the Atlantic Ocean, somewhere over there, where we would call like the maritime provinces now. Is there anything else that you see that looks important or interesting to you? I think that looking down from the map that the islands were different than the way they look now, that they were more connected back then and there's been a shift in the topography. So some of this treasure seems to be spread out through various islands now. But when we were there, it was all one. But it looks like there's been a change in the water coverage. And so mm -hmm. that it made a bunch of small islands. 
But when we were taking our treasure over there, it was just one land mass at that time. Oh, I see. Interesting. Does it look like it's underwater or above water now? It looks like some of it is underwater, but they're small. It looks like some of it is underwater, but they're small, tiny little islands that are popped up. That's what it looks like, but it's actually, in fact, all joined together. It's all one island, but some of it has just been covered with water. But I think that they'll find somehow that it's connected or at least start joining the dots of these small islands to find the treasure as they go along. Interesting. And how did you leave that life in that lifetime? It looked like I was an old man and just that I, I wasn't really of ill health or anything. It was just sort of like, it was my time to go. And I was happy, had had a good life, accomplished what I wanted or needed to do. And it looks like I just passed away in my, on like the beach one day. And, and was, what did she Go ahead. What did you notice when you left? I noticed that the people are putting my body into the into the ocean, into the sea. And I think that they knew that that's what I would have wanted, that somehow I was just so connected to the water from all of my travels on it. And I see that they're, yeah, laying my body to rest in the water. And there's a sense of loss, especially from the children, because they enjoyed spending time with me. We had so much fun together. Mm-hmm. But there's an understanding, again, with them. They're very sort of spiritually evolved in the sense that they have a knowing that life doesn't end here and they know that I'm you know going on to my next chapter oh I see wonderful so just allow that lifetime to just recede to the place where it belongs. Now can I please speak with Crystal's higher self now, please? Can I speak directly with Crystal's higher self? You can. Why did you show her that lifetime? What did you want her to understand? You've been connected to this energy, even if she didn't know all the knowledge, she's been connected to the energy of this knowledge for many lifetimes. And that that energy is part of her even today. So what do you want her to do um, now that she knows this? feel it more acutely. For some reason, she's very scared. She lives in fear much too often. There's no reason for that. She's scared some for some reason to open herself to this energy, to the knowledge and the power that it has. She shouldn't be scared. It's not a power to be afraid of. What would happen if she opens herself more to this energy? Her life would just become easy flowing. Could you describe? Go ahead. I think she would spread much good upon this earth. But for some reason, she's very scared to fully step into her power. What is the root cause of this fear? Why is she so afraid of stepping into her power?
We see that there was something to do in her childhood where she felt like her light was diminished. That when she tried to open herself into this type of energy reform, that those around her didn't allow that to happen. Well, now that she's aware of that, does she need to have this fear any longer in her present time? She does not need to have this fear. It's something that she's been trying to actually recognize she has and work through. But there's been a block there for her. She does not need to have this fear any longer. Can you release it for her now that she's fully aware of what she's missing, holding on to it, and also where it originates from? Can you release it for her? We can, but we want her to know that old pattern still will creep back and that she is susceptible to putting blocks up in the future. So we will remove it today. But she has to recognize when these old feelings are coming back that she needs to stop them in her tracks and not allow old patterns to reintegrate. How can she do that? Is there something she needs to do so that she doesn't go back into her old ways? The power of her mind staying present in the moment. She needs to be very careful about her thoughts. She spends a lot of time in her head. In fact, she spends more time in her head than living in the present. And integrating into this earth, she spends a lot of time in her mind, living in her mind, and her thoughts rule her life. And so she needs to be very, very careful of what those thoughts are and be aware of them and stop the negative thoughts and the fear-based thoughts. Well, it's really hard to be happy and have happy thoughts if you're feeling bad. Why? How is she supposed to have good thoughts if she's feeling bad? We agree that it is very hard for her to feel happy when she's not physically feeling well. But some of the reasons that she's physically unwell have to do with the thoughts in her mind. They're they're joined and not separate. And she needs to recognize that pattern and that if she is able to be more on top of the thoughts in her mind, that her body will start to heal as well. Okay. Um, what is the, okay, so it's connected, but what is the very root cause of her feeling so bad? What is the very root cause of it? Our sense is that she's been fearful to step into her power and that she has allowed herself in a way to become sick of her own doing as it keeps her power down. If her energy is low, she's not going to be able to step into her true power. And she's done this because she's afraid. She's afraid that if she steps into this power that she will be more powerful than she could have ever have dreamed. And she she's right. That is the truth. But there's something in her that is so fearful of being fully who she is. There's something that she allows to keep holding her back. But if Crystal can get out of her mind and put that ego aside and step into her power, she will feel healthy. She will be happy. She is extremely powerful and should own that power instead of trying to hold it back. What would it look like if she steps into her power? Can you show her what it will look like in her life so she can see? We are showing her we have to clear away 
cloudy fog that's in her brain to show her, but we're trying to show her a picture of vibrancy and health and show her that she steps into this goddess power that she's had in other lifetimes. She is like a goddess and she is extremely attuned to spiritual energies. She's able to heal just from being on the earth and connecting with other people. She brings a great energy to the world. I think she's been trying to hide this power for fear that other people will judge her. But she doesn't need to worry about that. Even if people do judge her, they're still going to be taking something from the feelings that she puts out there or a spark from a word that she says. And they may judge, but that energy or that word will stay with those people. So even if they do judge her, she shouldn't be hurt by that. Does she understand this now? She does. Her subconscious knows it and understands it. We'll be working with her because she still has blocks. They need to be clear, but we're doing this now and we will continue to work with her on this. Okay. Can you clear those blocks for her? Does she need them for any purpose? Are they serving any purpose? No, she's holding on to them. They no longer serve any purpose. Can you clear them for her and allow her to step into her power fully? Yes, it looks like we're able to do that. Oh, good. Okay. Is she feeling or sensing anything as you allow her to step into her power? Does her body feel anything at all? A lightness. There's always constriction in her chest. It goes from her throat, down her throat, into her chest, around her heart. And just above her stomach, there's always a tightness there. Like she's holding this power of hers in. And we're clearing that so that it's able to pour out of her more freely. Okay, hey, wonderful. Why did she have the ovarian failure? What was that all about? That was trauma from her childhood. It was from years of being told to live a certain way by her mother and her integrating that and taking that truth as her own. It was the power of her mind that shut down that system. Wow. Um, was there a purpose in her experiencing this? Did she learn anything from this? She's learned what it feels to have a chronic illness. And in this world right now, there are so many people suffering with chronic illness. And if she didn't go through this, she wouldn't be able to empathize with them. But now she'll be able to understand what they're going through and empathize more. And she'll be able to send that understanding energy towards them and help them heal. Wow. I see. And um, what exactly do you want her to have this, this experience for? It allowed her to have an understanding of almost what is a collective consciousness helping, happening in the earth right now. There's so many people sick in their body and sick in their mind. And it will allow her to be more relatable to them. And it will allow her to show them that it doesn't have to last forever. That many people, almost every single person on this earth, can control their own health. It's hard to believe and there are people that are trying to make people sick through toxic food and toxins in our water and toxins in our air. But we can still overcome this. We are more powerful than those toxins are. We are more powerful using our thoughts and our minds. We can heal ourselves. 
And Crystal can come out of this dark time. And she can heal herself and be an example to others and show them that it's possible. Well, now that she's fully aware of this, can you release this completely for her since she understands the reason why she had this, the root cause? Can you release the ovarian failure and this issue um, she's had and just release it and heal it for her now since she's to be an example? We can. What are you doing to do this? We're cleansing her ovaries and her uterus as we speak. They've shut themselves down. They're not dead. They're not failed. It's not a failure. They were protecting themselves. They've been told not to work by her, by her mother. So they shut themselves down and went into hibernation. They're not dead. We can clean them. We can cleanse them and turn the energy of them back on again. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Is she feeling or sensing anything as you work in that area? A lightness. She can feel the light in her reproductive system. There's a light pouring through. And there's spiraling energy on both of the ovaries, lighting them up again. Great. Okay, thank you for that. What about the numbness on the left, the left side, I believe? This is another block. This is how we've been trying to communicate with her. We have been sending energy through her left ear since she was a little girl. She can feel and hear a sound coming from us into her left ear. And she wasn't aware of what that was. I think it scared her when she was younger. And we tried not to scare her, but she lived in fear for so much of her life. And she ended up blocking this energy and that ended up causing this numbness and tingling because the block shouldn't be there. It was like a battle of us trying to send energy and her blocking our energy. And so it caused the body to go into this state of imbalance. Wow. Well, now that she's aware of this now, what exactly do you want her to know as far as you guys communicating with her so that she can receive the information? She's received this information before. We showed her this life today to remind her that we work with her, that she doesn't need to be living in fear, that she can open herself to us, that we are all us. That we're all one anyway. She is us and we are her. And she does not need to be fearful. That there does not need to be a block. That it's in our charts to work together. That we've done this before. We hope that this life we've shown her today. Reminds her of the happiness. That you can find when you work collaboratively. She should no longer put up the block. Or live in fear any longer. Can you release this issue with the numbness now that she's aware of this? Yes, it might take a little bit longer because this has been such a block for almost her whole entire life, but we will continue to work with her to release this. How long will it take, do you feel? We see this resolving in the next couple of months. Is there anything you want her to do while it's resolving? She needs to be careful of her diet. When she gets sad or lives in fear, she turns to foods that she finds to be of comfort, but these are not good for her. She what would be the most ideal? Oh, go ahead. She needs to focus, and she knows this, on more of a plant-based lifestyle. She doesn't like to eat animal type protein. And there's a reason for this. It doesn't do well on her body. So we encourage her to incorporate, as she's been trying throughout the years, as much fruit and vegetables as possible. Dairy, as she knows, is not good. She doesn't really eat dairy now as it is. So continue on with the, that. Continue on with supplementation. 
salary is good, but she doesn't have to worry. She's so worried if she misses a day of salary juicing. Salary juicing will not be her cure. It is a helpful tool, but it will not be the cure. It's a more holistic approach. She doesn't need to worry so much about her diet. She just needs to give herself whole foods. Doesn't have to be massive quantities of it. Just whatever she does put into her body should be of high quality where possible. Um, is there a supplement that would act almost like a cure? We're hearing the probiotics, stuff that is good for her gut flora will be extremely beneficial. High quality probiotic. And um, does she have any allergies that she's unaware of to food? She has a fairly good sense of what she shouldn't be eating. She needs to stay away from gluten, rancid, high fat. She should even eat what we talk about on earth as good fats in low quantities. Minimal coconut oil. Minimum avocado, avocado oil. Those are good oils, but still for her, she should be decreasing fats as much as possible. Are there any supplements that she's taking that do not agree with her body? She knows there were supplements her mother tried to give her at Christmas that were not high quality. She took those only for a couple of days and knew right away. Okay. She needs to listen to her body and listen to the messages that we're giving her. We're focusing her in on reputable companies, and she needs to take those and not take cheap knockoff. Okay, it's good to know. Um, if you are releasing this issue with the numbness, do you want her to stay on her antidepressants? We suggest that she tries to go off them. We think that she doesn't need them. We think it's been a crutch. That it has allowed the block to continue. We think that she should be able with diet to get off of these antidepressants. We want what her to that? try over the next few days not to take them and only to take them again if the symptoms are so severe that she's not coping well. But then again, in a few more months, to again try to come off of them. Okay, and is there, there any type of plan that you want to suggest when she gets off of them? Of like, um, how do you want her to get off of them? Doctors would say to slowly decrease your dose, but we don't think that this will be necessary for her. Oh, okay. As long as she's able to focus on her energy, not living in fear, and eating well and staying hydrated, that all of these things combined should allow her to come off of these with not a problem. Okay, great. Um, what about her de depression in general? Um, if you said that she's a lot of her issues are from not stepping into her power, what is the root cause of the depression? It is the same as what you just said. Can you release this now that she's aware and stepping into her power? Can you release the the depression for her? Yes, absolutely. That is done. Mm -hmm. She will just have to continue to make sure going forward that she doesn't allow all patterns and beliefs to creep in. And if they do, to control them and put them back where they belong, which is not as a part of her life moving forward. Okay. Thank you for that. What about her energy? She said she's she was experiencing such low energy. What is the very root cause of this? Again, it's because she's not been stepping into her power and her soul is not feeling fulfilled. Her soul was feeling shrunk almost in this body because she was limiting it from doing what it is meant to do. And so 
the shrinking of the soul also cause shrinking of her energy. But if she allows her soul and her power to flourish, her energy will return as well. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Now that she has that message, can you return her energy so that, and now that she's aware, she cannot shrink her soul again? Her ego is trying to block us, but we are pushing it aside. Yes, we are able to work on this now. Is she feeling or sensing anything as you do that? A lightness in her chest. A peaceful, warm energy in her mind and her brain. We're repairing some connections in her brain that have been damaged. That should help with the depression as well. Oh, thank you. Tell me more about her brain. You said there's some damage. Why? It's trauma from not believing in herself and for putting these blocks up through all these years. We're living in so much fear. It's caused the brain to misfire and not function as it should. But we're repairing these connections now. This will start to heal those synapses in her brain. It will also heal the depression and will also aid in the return of her energy. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, okay. Let's see. What about her throat? She says she felt like as if there was an issue with her throat, feeling congested. What is the very root cause of that? Because she's not speaking her truth. She knows her power deep down, but again, she's hiding it. She tries to suppress it. She feels like that is a safer way to be when really she just needs to step into that. And if other people cannot align with that energy, it is not her worry. And so she's not always been willing to speak her truth or live in her truth and has affected the chakra in her throat. But we are scrubbing and clearing that area now. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, switching gears to should they sell their house this spring and make a move to the country? He would be happier in nature. Absolutely. If they can do that, if they can press forward with that, they would find a lot of joy being closer to nature. Is this relationship beneficial to her? It can be, but she cannot control her partner. So only if he can bring his energy up to match the energy that she's going to be moving forward with, will this relationship be beneficial? If what do you, okay, what do you suggest for her? What should she do? When it, or what kind of advice do you have to give her about this relationship? That it is okay to let it go, but it is also possible for him to heal himself that he has trauma of his own and he has many many blocks of his own he's blocking his true power too he's focused his power very singularly singularly on his career he's not allowed his power to branch into other areas of his life he thinks that if he puts all of his energy in his career that because he's doing such a good job there that everything else in life will pop, fall into place. But that is not the case. You need to water all areas of your life to allow those flowers to bloom equally. If you only put area water into one area of your life, those other areas that you are not tending to start to wilt. And this has happened in the marriage. This has happened in his confidence issues in other areas of his life. He has traumas of his own that he needs to work with. We would encourage having him set up a session like this with you to help him work through his own issues. Okay. All right. Um, so how long do you want her to wait or... Um... 
when will she know if he's not moving with her? If he is not willing to read some of the text that she thinks would be helpful, the evolution of his soul, if he is not willing to book a session with you and work on progressing himself, those will be telltale signs for her that it's time to release his energy and release him and move on in a path that no longer would be of one in marriage with this with this man. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Okay. Um, if he does choose to book a session with me and if he does choose to work on himself and then um, would it, would you, what do you suggest as far as like the future of their relationship? Like advice for it. So sad what they've been going through over these past several years because both of them have so much potential and they both want such similar things, but they both have so many blocks. And if he can release those blocks, they are a power couple beyond what their wildest imaginations can even contemplate. What they can do together and what they can build upon with their energies united is absolutely astounding. That's amazing. Thank you for that. Um, what kind of job do you want her to have? We would say that the job that she chooses, she's been choosing lately for financial reasons, that she needs to tap more into the spiritual realm. And it's okay for her to keep her old job in order to continue to provide her with the financial support that she currently has in her life. But that as she steps into her power, She will eventually be able to support herself financially. That way, we see her writing a book. We've seen her writing books for many years and have tried to give her many, many, many pieces of information, themes, etc. to use. But she starts and stops. But again, this has to do with her blocks and her fear base. But as these clear, she'll be able to hear us more clearly and fulfill these and we see her sitting in nature, hearing the messages we're giving her and allowing those messages to be filtered out to the greater population, whether it be through work one-on-one -on -one or through stuff such as writing and no. getting the word out that way. Wow. Okay. Great. Okay. So, because she was curious about QHHT, is this something you want her to do? She could, but we don't see that being her path. Okay. And um, as far as, so you are going to help her so she can heal, hear you more and you suggest she, she um, writes a book, but for right now you want her to stay in this current job anything else about her career and stuff like that that you want to tell her? That it's all just a game. And even though it seems so negative, that it is just a game. And she comes to the table with a positive light. And that is something that these negative parties, even though they don't express it in the moment, do take away from her. And so she is making a difference, even if it doesn't seem that way. And that she needs to protect herself and ground herself better before going into these more tense meetings because she allows their energy to influence her own, where she needs to protect herself and recognize that it's external from anything that is going on internally to her. Right, because she says if she spends time with her mother, that she'll take on all this negative negative energy. How is she supposed to interact with these people? She needs to ground and protect herself. And she also needs to realize that it's okay to let people like that go in her life. 
She feels an incredible sense of duty to these individuals. But again, if they're not going to be shifting energetically along with her, it is okay to let them go. Okay, and when it comes to her mother in particular, what advice do you want to give her when it comes to her relationship with her mother? Remember that there is good in her. Even though she presents with a lot of characteristics that are hard for Crystal and many others in the family to properly absorb, that there is good and light in her, that she has traumas of her own, and that she is on her own spiritual path and don't own her energy. You can recognize them, you can see them, and you can try to do what you will to not become them. But don't own them and don't feel guilt because of them. Oh, okay, that's really helpful advice. What is the reason why she has a mother like that? Why that mother? Her mother is a shadow self. So many of us. She displays traits that so many of us harbor in the shadows. And she shows us parts of ourselves that we sometimes don't want to recognize as being there. But it's okay to recognize that we all have these parts to ourselves. To realize that her mom, unfortunately, is living in that part of herself more than the other part. But just to recognize that that energy is there in all of us, but we can overcome it. Okay. Well, now that she's aware of this, will this help her in any way? It will. She won't feel as guilty and she also won't feel as anxious. She will be more understanding and able to see through that negativity to the point inside her mom of love. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Um, she's been told many times that she is supposed to have a child. What do you want to tell her about this? That that is absolutely possible, but she should not be having a child with her husband the way that their relationship currently stands. If they can unite their energies to be more into a positive sphere, if he can also work to release his traumas and they can be more loving, then absolutely they will and should have a child. But if they continue to not energetically evolve and to hold a negative, heavy energy, that's not conducive to having a child. Okay, thank you for that. Um, how does her body look now? It looks so much lighter and healthier. Okay, good. Is there any more healing that you could give her right now? We will continue to work on this. The numbness on her left side is going to take a little bit longer, but we will continue to work with her on that. What happened with her sister? Why did her sister stop talking to her? Her sister takes things almost like a reflection of Crystal. She looks at her and when they should be uniting and growing stronger, she sees her shadow self unnecessarily and she retreats into a space of anger. She is also an extremely powerful being, but she's letting her negative emotion take over. This is completely unnecessary. She also needs to work to try to evolve beyond this. It's a pattern that's been holding her back from her true power. She gets into a headspace of anger. It is separate from Crystal. It has really nothing to do with her. But she uses Crystal as an outlet for her anger. And so Crystal has to separate herself from that and recognize that she has her own path of work to do. 
Let's see. Let's, do you have any other advice when it comes to her sister? Just to send her light and love and healing. And that can sometimes be hard when you're feeling like the target of a, someone's negative energy. But what, will, what will happen if she sends us light and love? Her higher self, her sister's higher self will receive it. She may be blocking that, the light and love at this time, but her higher self will receive that light and love. It never, ever goes to waste. Some of it will even be received by her son and her husband. She's going through a healing journey of her own right now. And although she might not receive that directly, it will be received. And over time, it will be felt. Can you send this light and love now? Absolutely. We're doing it as we speak. Okay, great. Let me know when you're done. It is done. Okay, great. Um, is there anything else that you want to tell her about anything else at all that I didn't ask? We just want to remind her again of how loved she is, that she is loved. She doesn't feel that very often. She's been in a relationship where love has been withheld from her and not expressed. And that is not okay. And going forward, we hope that these two will be able to find a better energetic relationship that is conducive to them both flourishing. She deserves to feel light, love, and happiness. And she needs to know that even if she does not receive that from her partner, that it is within her, she is love, and we are sending her love. She is part of the greater universal energy of love. And she needs to remember that connection at all times. Thank you for that. And then she wanted to know how can she move more into the fourth and fifth dimension? By continuing to build off the energy that she will have received in this session today, by limiting fear-based beliefs, by limiting fear itself, by helping to control her thoughts, they are a manifestation of her life. And if she is better able to control her thoughts, she will continue to evolve into a happier, healthier space. And do you have any um any like ideas or advice on how she can control control her thoughts? Stop. We're putting a big stop sign in her head. When she starts to get on a train of negativity, she needs to just flash the stop sign in her head. Stop. 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 Stop and think of something that she can be grateful for. Being grateful is an incredible, incredible, incredibly powerful practice. Stop the negative thought. Give thanks for something. And that will change the energy and shift her into a more powerful, positive mindset. Thank you so very much. Do you have any final messages for her? We have no more messages from her. But do want to thank you for the work that you're doing and continue to do. And we do sense that you and Crystal at some point will meet on one of your trips in Egypt. It is on her list after she came across your work, and we do see this happening in the future. And we thank you for the work that you are doing. 